So 70 million years is what they calculate it would take for the Colorado River to carve out the Grand Canyon. 70 million years. And they, they before this, mocked the creationists because they said no one in their right mind can believe that that Grand Canyon did not take time to create. But now we have Mount St. Helens and we have ours that we can create canyons that are 700 feet deep. Now the Grand Canyon, the Grand Canyon itself, what, 18 miles wide, 250 miles long, and one mile deep. And now what they say is that the Grand Canyon had a very large lake sitting up just to the north and to the east, and a debris bridge broke and carved out that entire canyon and did it probably in just a few days. And I'll show you something here. Here is Palouse Falls, here in eastern Washington. 140, 180 foot drop from the top to the bottom. Palouse Falls was created by something else more gargantuan, the Missoula Flood. You've heard of the Missoula Flood? Um, gentleman by Mr. Betts, uh, was a geologist in 1923. He roamed all over eastern Washington and all the Scabland areas and trying to explain these geologically and he came up with the unorthodox opinion that all of these things that he's looking at was caused by a gargantuan flood, a, a, a limited flood, but a flood that washed down through eastern Washington uh, all the way out into the Portland area and into the, uh, into the ocean. And he was just about laughed out of his um, license to be a human. <laughs> Nobody wanted to believe him. For years, this man studied this, and guess what? The Missoula Lake was sitting up in Missoula, and you had the panhandle of, you had just the panhandle, very thin part of Idaho, and you had the Clark Fork River that suddenly became blocked. It became blocked many, 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 many years ago, right after the Ice Age started melting back. And I'm going to talk to you about the Ice Age in much more detail tomorrow. But when it melted back, there was a great, big, huge um, dam. It's an ice dam. And the Missoula Lake backed up such that this ice dam from the top to the bottom was over 2,500 feet. That's a tall, long ice dam. Water backing up. <laughs> It was one-fifth the size of Lake Michigan, one-fifth the size. 500 cubic miles of water was sitting in this when the ice dam broke. Okay, there are some very good videos, a couple of them made by Nova, that talk about this, and they have some very nice graphics showing you how this happened. When the ice dam broke, 380 cubic miles of water poured out over two days with 200 foot tall front of water washing down through eastern Washington and it carved out everything that you see in eastern Washington from the Moses Lake potholes to all the canyons to the Palouse Falls. The Palouse Falls now has a six mile canyon uh, that it um, travels all the way out uh, into the Snake River and its distance is 140 feet through solid rock. Well, that was all done. That was all done in one catastrophic event that occurred, and all the geologists agree now that that's what it was. And it has occurred a couple more times since. It does not take millions of years to see these kind of things happen. God has given numerous examples, and all you have to do is look at the science. Now, I'll tell you, the evolutionist is a uniformitarianist. By that, the evolutionist says that everything is uniform. What I see occurring today occurred in the past. If I see that water drips at this certain rate, then it dripped at that certain rate in the past. And that's simplistic, but what I'm saying is that you look at how much erosion is going on right now into into the lakes and into the rivers and into the ocean, then they extrapolate backward and, and make decisions about how old the earth is, not taking into account that it's not uniform. 
What happened in the past is not what's happening today, and they're not taking into account the flood. They noticed when they came to Spirit Lake that little twigs were floating upright in the lake. Dr. Steve Austin uh, obtained his PhD from uh, Tennessee and proposed that logs from the flood, all the trees would be washed into the water and that these trees would blow and drop out at different stages of time. So here's one that just now dropped out. Here's one that dropped out earlier, one a little later. Here's one that just laid down. This was his proposal. And he came up with this proposal in the bathtub. <laughs> okay, he submitted his PhD from bathtub experience. Uh, experience. <laughs> I'm sure he got a lot of boat floating stories, duckings, and all kinds of stuff. It had to have been a horrible experience. But 1979 is when he got his PhD. 1980, Mount St. Helens erupts. So guess who's right there? Dr. Austin. And he's taking the helicopter, and here's a couple of upright logs. Uh, you know, that's kind of discouraging. I see tubes. But look at the logs very carefully now. Just look at them, look at the logs. And let's see what the next thing. Here's a whole bunch more right here. They're all tilted when they drained part of Spirit Lake through Haley's Ridge. It sucked the water down such that some of the logs kind of tilted. So that's why you've got a little bit of a tilt. So here's the experiment. It's 1985. This is Harold Coffin and John Morris, and they have an ugly little boat, <laughs> they have a, a sonar tow fish, and they have the awfulest pants that any man can ever wear. <laughs> I don't remember seeing anything like that in 1985. <laughs> but they're scientists, so can they help it? <laughs> so they took their little boat as people were watching them, and they went out on the mountain. They went out onto Spirit Lake. And now they're going to tow that little tow fish, it's a sonar tow fish, they're getting a sonar picture of the lake. And so they look at the lake, and these shadows are logs. And here they see some logs, some of which went way down and landed on the surface of the, the, the bottom of the lake. Other, other logs, like this one right here, was down, but not completely below. And the lake itself was about 150 feet deep. So that gives you a little rough idea. After they extrapolated and looked at this, what they came up with is that looking at the sonar, that this lake had anywhere between 20 and 40,000 upright trees planted on the bottom, buried at different intervals. Every time the tree went down, and then the, the mountain exploded and threw out more debris and ash, it would bury a part of that tree. So the tree stops here, then it gets buried a little more, another explosion buries it here, buries it here. And this is very important to understand why they're looking at this and why it's something that really has all the geologists concerned. So they decide to go down, this is uh, Dr. Steve Austin, um, Barry Dunsforth, uh, they're going to go down and they're, they're going to dock. What they found, first of all, as they went underneath, 